Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on voltage gated ion channels. And in this video, I really just want to um, talk about uh, two other uh, calcium gated potassium channels, uh, which are very famous, and the names of which, you know, I can't, don't feel like I would miss them out if I uh, didn't talk about them a little bit. But I'm also going to use it just as an opportunity uh, to recap. Um, the um, structure of a calcium-gated uh, potassium channel, basically. Right, okay, so um, there are loads and loads of different types of potassium channel in cells, and um, a huge, great division of potassium channels are made from um, polypeptides which are grouped into the 6TMP type, uh, which just stands for 6 transmembrane uh, spanning domains, so membrane spanning domains, six transmembrane domains, and they also have a P loop, basically. Okay, so uh, of these two types of um, polype of the sorry of this type of polypeptide, there are two main subclasses. The polypeptides which assemble to make voltage gated potassium channels, which are the KVs, and the uh, subunits which assemble to make calcium-gated uh, potassium channel, the KCAs. Okay, so we've discussed KVs, how uh, there you can split KVs up into 12 more classes, the KV1s ranging all the way down to the KV12s, okay? And within each of those classes, there are even more subdivisions, so there are KV1.1 all the way down to KV1.8, and finally we've got down to the genes. So at this level, these are the actual genes, basically, which code alpha subunits, uh, i.e. code polypeptides, which actually look like this. So uh, the polypeptides will look like this as far as their membrane-spanning structure is concerned, so they'll look something like that, which has six transmembrane-spanning uh, domains, or uh, membrane spanning alpha helices, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it has this bit that tries to span but then doesn't, which is called the P loop, which is very important in the selectivity of these channels. Okay, so basically you have about 40 different genes that all code for polypeptides uh, which look similar to this, and they're characterized in this way. So, so there's eight here, these KV1.1s to KV1.8s, and they're characterized into these 12 groups here, and they're all KVs. So there's 40 different KV genes characterized, uh, classified into these 12 different classes, basically. Okay, but they all code polypeptides that have the same overall membrane spanning structure. Four of these polypeptides we know then assemble into a um, pore forming unit of the voltage gated potassium channel basically. So four of them aggregate together and that forms a voltage gated potassium channel, a functional voltage gated potassium channel on its own basically. But we know that you know these can uh, have other portions that are important. For instance, um, well, they're, they're all they all have a tetramization domain down here, the T1 domain, which causes them to aggregate. Uh, but f n near the T1 domain, combine beta subunits, which can alter the properties of this. But just from the alpha subunits, you have a huge number of uh, variations in the uh, way in which you can make these potassium channels. So these are alpha subunits. Okay, right. So now we're going to talk about the KCAs. These are also classified as having this same sort of structure, even though, as we've seen, KCA1, doesn't, which forms the BK channel, actually has a slightly different structure to this. But they are still classified under this type of potassium channel. Okay, so KCAs are split into five different types. So you have K KCA1, uh, which only has one gene in that class of in that class. There's only one gene, so there's just KCA1, and that's a single gene. But we know we can get different variants of it uh, through splicing uh, and uh, choosing different of uh, and choosing different combinations of those optional exons to have actually within our mature mRNA. Then we have KCA2. Uh, KCA, uh, which has three genes in KCA2. There are KCA. Uh, 2.1, KCA 2.2, and KCA 2.3. Okay, so there are three different genes that are all classified as KCA 2s, and then obviously it goes on KCA 3, 
and KCA4 and KCA5, which are again uh, classifications which contain multiple different genes which are, are all classified in this way. Okay, so there are many different genes which code for alpha subunits, which again will form a tetramer, uh, which forms you a calcium-sensitive potassium channel, basically. And uh, the KCA1, the KCA2, and the KCA3, um, those, are, uh, those are very much so studied. So KCA1, we've seen, is, has another name. It's called the BK channel. So the final channel that you get when you assemble four alpha subunits together, it forms, we, as we know, a calcium sensitive potassium channel uh, but those channels are called BK channels for big conductance uh, voltage and calcium gated potassium channel these next ones the channels that you form from KCA2 so you make a, a, a tetramer of alpha subunits from the class of, class of KCA2 uh, subunits so again, it's similar to uh, in the case of uh, voltage-gated potassium channels where you can make homotetramers or heterotetramers, but if you make heterotetramers, you have to pick uh, alpha subunits that are in the same class, basically. And that is obviously how we managed to classify them in the first place. Okay, so um, KCA, um, so if you make um, channels out of the KCA2 genes, basically uh, those are known as SK channels, and that's for small conductance calcium gated potassium channel. So uh, these ones have a much lower conductance than our big conductance calcium gated potassium channel. And finally, the KCA3 ones, uh, you can again make. Uh, homo and heterotetramers out of the genes of uh, the KCA3 uh, class, and if you make um, the, these channels out of those, then you get what is known as an IK channel, which is for intermediate conductance calcium-gated potassium channel. Okay, uh, so um, another important thing is that uh, Specifically, these SK ones do not have the same structure as the BK ones. Uh, they have a structure that goes back to this, basically. So they have six uh, membrane-spanning alpha helices. So if we look at these, the structures of the polypeptides coded for by uh, KCA2 genes, so genes in this class here, uh, then uh, they code for polypeptides that look exactly like this, basically. Okay, so you don't have uh, the um, you don't have the S zero uh, membrane spanning alpha helix that is present in this then the polypeptide coded for by the KCA one. Uh, the other thing you do not have is you do not have uh, the regulator of conductance of potassium 1 or the regulator of conductance of potassium 2 uh, domain. So th let me just draw what the KCA, um, KCA1 looked like, just to remind everyone. So it looked like this. It had an extra membrane-spanning alpha helix, and it also had two massive great domains here in the cytoplasmic side, which were responsible for the calcium sensitivity of this um, of this um, potassium channel, basically. Uh, and these were called the regulator of conductance of potassium 1 and the regulator of conductance of potassium 2, basically. Uh, and those are not present on the polypeptides coded for by these KCA2 genes. So how do, this, how do these um, polypeptides sense calcium in this case? Well, they have calmodulin bound to them again. So remember, calmodulin has this sort of dumbbell shape. It has two lobes, an N lobe and a C lobe. And basically, calmodulin is constitutively bound to the cytoplasmic or carboxyl terminus of this polypeptide. And it's involved in uh, the sensing of calcium and then inducing a, um, a conformational change in this uh, polypeptide to open the channel, basically. And uh, you can show that because if you, uh, if you express a mutant calmodulin in the cell, which has a much lower affinity for calcium, then the effect of these channels built out of these KCA2s, these SK channels, uh, becomes much lower, basically. Okay, so um, another important thing to say is that just as the KCA1 channels, or these BK channels, these BK channels which were made out of tetramers of KCA1s, just as they were bound to N-type voltage-gated calcium channels, basically the SK channels are also bound uh, to voltage-gated calcium channels, but they are generally found uh, bound to L-type voltage-gated calcium channels. So I'll just draw an L-type voltage-gated calcium channel here. 
Okay, and uh, here's the accessory subunits here, and alpha 2 delta there. So you find this SK channel bound to L-type voltage-gated calcium channels. And let me just remind you of what it means for a voltage-gated calcium channel to be L-type. It means that this alpha subunit, this poor-forming unit, which is one polypeptide in the case of voltage-gated uh, calcium channels, rather than four polypeptides all formed together to make a tetramer, Instead, it's one polypeptide in voltage-gated calcium channels. And basically, there are lots of different genes which can all code for this. Um, but uh, if it's an L-type voltage-gated calcium channel, it means that the gene that coded for it uh, was a, a K, uh, CAV1 um, uh, gene, basically. It could be CAV1.1 to 1.4. All of those are counted as L-type calcium channels. If it's, if it's one of the K the CAV1s uh, coding for this alpha subunit, then it is counted as a L-type voltage-gated uh, calcium channel. Okay, uh, and this interaction is very close, so it's usually about 100 nanometers uh, between the SK channel and the uh, voltage-gated calcium channel. Now, I actually said 100 nanometers for the distance between the BK channel and its N-type voltage-gated calcium channel. In a previous video, I said that the distance between the BK channel, which I'll draw here, so this is the BK channel now, so this is our four alpha subunits coded for by the uh, CA, uh, the, sorry, the KCA1 uh, gene, and um, it's basically associated with a voltage-gated calcium channel 2, but this time an N-type, which means that this alpha subunit here, which is the poor forming unit, this bit here, is instead of being coded for by a CAV1 gene, it's instead coded for by a CAV2.2 gene, that specific gene. That is what is known as an N-type calcium channel. And well, I'll just draw in the accessory subunits, so gamma's there, beta, alpha 2, delta over here. And basically you find these two this is the BK channel here, um, you find these two closer than 30 nanometers apart. You find them 30 nanometers apart. So the BK channel is associated with the N-type channel, and the SK channel is associated with the L-type calcium channel.